Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. The Lord is demanding wisdom from his church as a condition for them to move forward in life. The church is in a place called Padam Aran. It's called the highest plateau with your current strength and ability. Meaning, of all you have, of all you are, and of all you can do, you can rise no further. It's called the plateau. It's called Padam Aran. The Bible says, and Jacob came to Padam Aran and said, I must move. If it means facing Esau, I must move. I can rise no further than this under Laban. You've been so good, but this is the highest plateau you can offer me. And I've got more. There are more mountains to conquer. There are more giants to conquer. There are more medals to be won. I must move. And God is saying to somebody, if you don't move, I will recall you back. And you have a deadline to move. It's not a physical move. It's to advance in life. And sometimes when a person is so precious to God, he doesn't want them to go into the dustbin archives of mankind and says, I will recall when the ovation is lauded for you so that you will not become a proverb of disdain among the sons of men. God wants his church to move. Yes, it's that spirit of prophecy again. He wants you to advance and is lending his people wisdom and it's faith. There are just two ingredients for everyone to move forward in these last days. Faith and wisdom. Faith and wisdom. Whoever has those two is made in this generation. Faith and wisdom. You will have both. Because you all have dwelt long enough on this mountain. God will turn you northward. That word northward means move forward. That's what it means in that passage in Deuteronomy. Most of you didn't say that because you don't understand what it was. It was a word to Moses. to say turn northward and continue in your journey. Praise God. He says, as you advance, for Moses, there was a Red Sea before him. For Mary Magdalene, there was a stone at the entrance of the cave. So when you get there, you'll find out. Either the stone had been removed, or the Lord is waiting to tell you what to do to part the sea. But everyone will have to cross over. Everyone must move forward. And I call you by your spirit, I charge you by your spirit. I prophesy into your spirit. And I charge you to move forward in life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, to give you strength, courage, boldness to move forward. And advance in the course of purpose. Yes. And advance towards destiny. Yes. Advance towards Zion. Yes. The city of the living God. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Praise God. There are few ingredients that will enable a man to succeed in life. Number one is the word of God. He says the so I went to sow. So is the word of God. It's the word of God. Number two is your heart. All procedures of bringing the word to pass was a condition of your heart. Someone told me once that I saw a vision you were preaching. In that vision, there were angels at the back and human beings in the front said, I sat at the back and I did not understand what you were saying. 
So I asked the angel, what is he saying? And the angel said, he said, the angel spoke, I'm trying to tell you, he said, he's speaking gibberish. He's speaking gibberish. She asked, what's gibberish? He said, it's childlike talk. Meaning, except to be like a little child, that person can never make it in life. Because that is the only heart condition that can bring God's word to pass. It is speaking gibberish. So there were angels there listening to the word. They were fascinated. The Bible says they delight to look into the word. They love the word. But they don't understand the word like we do. They don't have the wisdom of God has given to us. Christ has been made unto us wisdom. That's why one said, testify asking in a place was an angel that asked the Lord. He said, what is man that you are? He didn't understand the mystery of the love of God. He didn't understand it. They don't understand it. And in that parable, the Lord said, except their heart is good. That's Luke, translation Luke 13. I said, these are they which from a good heart. And I checked the meaning of good, meaning pliable. And ready to learn and receive. And the word patience, those two things. He said, bring forth the word, some are 30 fold, some are 60, and some are 100. You begin to wonder, when Jesus was on earth, he said, the prostitutes enter the kingdom before you. And if you check those who were entering, there were people, there were nobodies. People's society will write off. Why? They were up. You know, the Pharisees had, they had issues with everything. When you preach and they talk, they say, oh, that Moses, no, they, they, you know, they couldn't enter in. They couldn't. He says he denies the wise and the prudent. They would not allow them in. He has Giving it to babes. Babes. And of the five things that stop mankind from making it in life, I was shocked. Satan is only one. The birds of the air. Satan is one. I found people who have been close to me. I found out that there are so many cases you don't need prophecy to tell. Who will scale through and who is going to fail? You can easily tell based on parameters of the word of God. You can tell that this person will scale through because you can see one, two, three from the word. You don't need prophecy. Prophecy is for children. Prophecy is for babies. When you mature in the word, you begin to assess the mind of God. Then you yourself, your words become prophecy. That you can tell the mind of God. You can perceive that because this is this, God is going to move this way. When a man takes a step of faith, you know God is going to move. When a man refuses to take a step of faith, you know, you know, you can tell. You can tell just from the word of God. So Satan is one, the birds of the air. Now the second one is persecution. That denies people access to making it in life. Persecution. Which the Bible calls normal. They call it the sunlight which is needed for plants. The Bible says, but because they had not much root, they were scourged by the sunlight which is to effect photosynthesis for them to be fruitful in life. The third one he called is the cares of this world. That is the pressure to make it. I hear a slogan. I was watching a TV once and a man said, even at 40, you don't have land. You don't have a house. Say you have failed. I said, whoops. And, and that, that it was a, we were trying to buy something. It was a shop. And they had a TV on. And there were two men, they came. Obviously, they were both 40. They come on a um, commercial motorcycle called Okada. And obviously, I guess probably they don't have land. So as man said, you don't have land. You don't have a house. You have failed. And immediately I saw their head dropped. And they did like this. <laughs> if care is not taken under the pressure to 
in quote, make it, they might kill. They are under pressure. So people come under pressure from a teaching in church and the cares can develop from church. I tell people, be careful where you go. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Right? Take it what you hear. The church you go to is more even important than the work you go to. If you hear right, you get a good work. If you hear wrong, mm, let's not go and do it. Then he says, lost of all the things, choke the word. Then he said, deceitfulness of riches also denies a man from making it. But I found out that people don't concentrate on deceitfulness of riches. Everybody's talking about persecution, Satan, demons. You know, in Isaiah 5, 13, it says, my people are famished and they go into captivity. Why? Because they lack knowledge. Hosea says, my people are destroyed, not because of the activity of Satan, but why? Because they lack knowledge. So Satan prides on their ignorance. If they have knowledge, Satan is capped. The one that they said, the belt of truth. The shield of faith, you quench all his arrows. So the deceitfulness of riches is a doctrine on riches. That is, just interpreting it as it is said, that is deceitful, that is wrong, that if a man follows that doctrine, he will have his life cut short. One look at a story. And so I started on last week's Sunday, and I remember I said, the fact that you have worked hard does not mean that you, God holds the prerogative to decide who enjoys the fruit of his labor. It's, we saw that in the scripture. God holds that prerogative. He says it's a gift from God. Now, you say, but Psalm 128 says, thou shalt eat the labor of my hands. But there are conditions for it. Bible says, for example, you can experience mercy from God, but there are conditions. See, blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. He said, if you forsake your, for, confess your sins and forsake them, you shall have mercy. So the fact that God is merciful doesn't mean he will show you mercy. There are conditions for the mercy. The fact that God says you will eat the labor of your hand does not mean a man will eat the labor of his hand. There are conditions for it. Amen. And some of the things, I think I mentioned one or two reasons, one or two things, why God will deny a man to eat from the labor and his sweat and all the work he has done. You know, in Proverbs 13, 11, it says, any wealth gotten by vanity, God will take it from that man. He will take it from the man. He will not let him eat it. That's true deceit. He will not let him take it. So those people who are scamming people, doing 419 or the call it Yahoo, they are all going to spend their old age in misery. There is no prophecy to this. There is no a curse. It's no a curse. So how will he do it? He will return all the money he has taken from everybody back. Everybody. That's Zacchaeus. So to him, I've taken, I'll return fourfold. Then they can have long life. There's no story. You can't, there's no argument. If it's a deliberate act of fraud, they cannot enjoy it. God will deny them the access. <laughs> Somebody said amen. <laughs> In Proverbs 13, 22, it says, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So if you're living in sin, don't think you're enjoying. Somebody's waiting to take over everything you have labored for in life. They'll wait for you to pile everything up. Just when he's about to start enjoying, they just recall him home. Say, come back. If he's a sinner, he goes to hell. So in Christ Jesus, he goes to heaven. Then they give the wealth to somebody who never knew about it. So you go and enjoy. John 4, from verse 31 or so, he said, I have sent you to reap where you did not sow. He said, others have labored. You have entered into their labor. In Deuteronomy 6, he said, I'll bring you to a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of good things, and I'll bring you to live in houses you did not build. Somebody has built it, couldn't live in it. You drink from wells you did not dig. You will drink from vineyards you did not plant. Amen. That's what the word of God says. So, some people are working for others to enjoy. And God Almighty is waiting. Wait to a point when he says, 
Now the Holy Spirit says, no, you're not enjoying. So your soul is required tonight. And they die and leave it and go. And whoever it is that is pleasing God, they say, you go and take it, it's yours. And it will enjoy. <laughs> Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. We're still talking about deceitfulness of riches. I want to look at an example of a man who was under such deceit. I call it the sins of the rich fool. The sins of the rich fool. We'll look at some other aspects of money. You know, you know, the, you know, something, you know there's something about God. He said that riches are not forever. In Proverbs 24, 23 to 20, he said riches are not forever. Now, has anybody been able to match the wealth of Solomon just like that? Do you know that there was no record his son was rich? There was no record that Rehoboam was rich. No. Say riches are not forever. I advise people, it's good to leave property for children. Please, leave more of operations for the children. Leave more of principles for the children. Leave more of skills for the children. Leave more of prudence and abiding principles for generating wealth for the children. That's why they say riches are not forever. If you give one billion dollars to a man that doesn't understand any business acumen, he will squander it, he will destroy it, and he will leave nothing for his own children. But if you leave skills, if you leave diligence, if you leave excellence, if you leave knowledge for a child, even if you leave no house, Abraham didn't leave house for Isaac. The yeah, Bible says he had not a square foot to be called his own. And Isaac was rich. Jacob was rich. They would generate wealth. Sometimes you build house, you stress. Run up and down. They look at the house and say, Dad, is this, this one? Is this a house? <laughs> they say, no, no. We can't live in this garden squabble. <laughs> we have, we, when they tell you their own plan of what they want to live, you know you just wasted money. You build, you build everything. They say, what is this? Say, come home to what? This, this trash that you built. I say, no, don't worry. We'll build something better for you yourself. Those are, that's wealth. Praise Jesus. I see people running, gotta, 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 gotta. Want to build houses. And it's good, it's good, it's good, it is good. But without godly principles, discipline, and all the amenities for wealth generation, it's a wasted investment. It's all going down the drain. Bible says it's not forever. By the time we're through, you will understand that God loves prudent people. He loves financially prudent people. He wants you to be financially prudent. He wants you to be wise. Take wise, intelligent decisions, investments. He wants you to be balanced. The story of the rich fool. I Luke chapter 12. I'll read from verse 13. While well, I'll read from 13, the parable started from 16. But you will understand what, what brought about the parable. In verse 13, then one of the company said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to share the properties with me. He's sitting on everything. That sounds legitimate. And he said to him, who made me the, I'm trying to find the right word. Who made me the, this one they put, when, so when a man dies, they put somebody in charge of the property. Who made me the administrator of your father's properties? I'm not the administrator. Then he said, be careful of coverture. He's talking to the same person. Who has been wronged? 
by maybe an elder brother sitting on property. Listen, people don't make it in life through properties, inheritance. No, 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 no. Now, go and check the billionaires of our age. There is no one that inherited anything. Bill Gates didn't start, he didn't have any inheritance. He started from a garage. The wealth in his hand started from a garage. They don't die because of inheritance. Actually, even the Bible says an inheritance wrongly gotten, the end will not be blessed. So if anyone gets an inheritance wrongly, it's, look, let me tell you, there's no prayer that can save him except he returns them. There's nothing you can do. Let me ask you, when the rich man came to Jesus and said, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, don't steal, don't kill. He said, no, I've done all this. I'm stuck. I can't move forward in life. What do I need to do to move forward? He said, sell all you have. Give to the poor. Follow me. Now, the man didn't do that. He went away sorrowfully. Do you need prophecy to know what's going to happen? He's going to end up with scammers. And they'll take all his money. And he's not going to eat or enjoy that money again. And because he's not moving forward, he may eventually die. Now, you've heard of people committing suicide. Nobody commits suicide because their business drowned. Let me make it clear. No. Nobody commits suicide because a husband ditched them. No. People commit suicide because there's a void in their heart and in their soul that only God can fill it and it is not filled. And because of that, they enter into what we call the land of nod, wandering. Their heart, he says, in Luke, is it 21 or 22? He says, a man's heart will fail them. That what means we'll get into a void where they will not know what to do to advance in life. So they'll be going in circles and never be able to move forward again in life. So how do you know? I experienced it. At one time in my life, I was promoted by man out of the will of God. And I knew something was wrong with that assignment, and that blessing. And I kept saying something is wrong somewhere. Everybody says, God said, God has promoted you. I will drive on Tottenham Bridge, and I feel like jumping into the river. What is this, oh God? I took drugs to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I understand drug addiction. I was taking sleeping pills. Someone visited me and said, ah, ah, pastor. All these sleeping pills like this. And I know they sleep. He didn't understand. Say, ah, what is it? Pray. I couldn't sleep. If I took all the pills, maybe in a day, I'll take two maximum three hours of sleep a day. That's the max I could get. I was disturbed. And I would drive on Tottenham Bridge. And I'll say, I wish I could just jump into this river and end it. Until I told them, I turned down your offer. I'm not taking it again. And all the people come around and say, don't come around me. And the Lord appeared to me and said, I congratulate you. I salute you for your decision, please, the Father. I've come to instruct you on the next step to take. Jesus appeared and began to tell me, he said, this is your assignment. This is what you are to do. This is what you will not do. If I didn't turn down that assignment, it will not appear. It will not appear. I had to turn it down. When I turned it down, the whole church ran me down. But Jesus appeared and congratulated me. He said, I salute you. And I bring greetings from my father in a vision. And the church was running me down. Say, look at him. What everybody is running to get. <laughs> and instantly, I stopped using sleeping pills. And I could sleep like a baby. And instantly, I felt like leaving. And I wanted to leave. And I began to leave. So when I say suicide is not because your business crashed or you don't have money in your pocket, you need to go to God and ask him what is void in your life that you need to feel. That's the only solution. You are out of the will of God. You need to locate it and do it, and you have peace. I'll get back to the message. <laughs> Somebody came to see me. Say, I came to tell you I'm a minister of God. That that decision you took is not by the spirit, it's in the flesh. He didn't know Jesus had appeared to me. <laughs> so you need to resign it immediately. <laughs> I said, that's what Sam, 
Please praise, praise God. Let's, <laughs> I've seen all sorts. So, he said to the man who has been wronged by somebody taking what could have been his in the will, say, beware of covetousness. Be careful of covetousness. Why? That's not the wealth. Concentrate on the wealth. Those ones will not be blessed. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. That's why I said, this is prerequisite to the parable. And he spoke a parable trying to explain to the man that he has a wrong concept of riches. You're going about to fight for your inheritance to be given to you. Maybe it's the senior brother sitting on it. He's trying to tell you, that's not the way to go about it. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. That looks like a bountiful harvest. He said, this will I do. I'll pull down my bands, take note. I'll build a greater one. There's nothing wrong in that. Even Isaiah 53 says, do what? He says, lengthen your cords, stretch forth your habitation, increase, expand, make room for expansion. So it's still in order. And I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, <laughs> you have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, you fool. Now, he's a fool. Why? That doesn't look like a fool. It looks like a wise man to the natural being. But God says, you are a fool. And says, you fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee, that who shall those things be which you have provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Then he said to his disciples, therefore, that means the story continues. But I'll stop there for now. The story continues, therefore. When you say therefore, that means he has not finished what he's trying to explain. He's not going further. Either to tell them what to do or what not to do based on the story he just said. So, He's called the rich fool. The question is, what did he do wrong? It looks very natural to me, whatever he had done. But God said he's a rich fool. Now, whatever he did is a law of sin and death. It's a doctrine of deceitfulness of riches. So this doctrine can send a man to his early grave. This doctrine, if it's not well managed, that's finances, can take a man's life. So it's important we learn one or two things from this story. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.